Well, today on the Mullen Jersey Show, uh, I got a special guest for you guys. We're talking all about business in different industries, what makes it different, what the heck's going on. So either way, it's going to be a fun episode, so stay tuned to WCR Nation. up everybody jersey here from windowcleaner.com and you are here what's up hey if it's your first time here you picked a weird episode but hopefully it's better than a cat video either way go back listen to all of the episodes it is on youtube and of course all of the platforms for podcasts soundcloud itunes everywhere else go back check it all out it's there 220 episodes for you to binge watch or listen on and if you are one of the cool kids and you watch every episode, you thumbs up and you, of course, buy from me because shameless plug time, it is because of you that I live the lavish lifestyle of a, one AirPod in at a time. So thank you so very, very much for all of your uh, orders. And if you want a supply guy or you just want to like virtual high five of awesomeness with me, my number is 862-312-2026. And that is a cell phone. So text me, be like, yo, Jersey. Everything's in my cart and I'll put it in. It costs you nothing extra. And it's like a super awesome virtual high five. And of course, the last shameless plug is American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you haven't gotten your subscription yet, please go to awcmag.com. Get your subscription. Get your stickers, man. Everybody likes stickers. Go do that. And I definitely appreciate it. Finally, the shout out of the week is from Archer Cleaning, who just said bullseye. This show will make you smarter. Archer window cleaning or Archer cleaning in general, you smart son of a gun. If you want to get a shout out, just leave a review anywhere you can on iTunes, more preferably, and uh, we'll go from there. So anyway, today I have a very interesting show for you. And a lot of you may not even know who this person is because he's uh, pretty forgettable, pretty forgettable. His name is Michael Mole. What's going on, man? Hi. <laughs> how's it going man really 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 good it's awesome to be back here with you after a uh, roughly seven year hiatus we were actually looking this up if you guys don't know this is michael mole and michael uh and i had a show like forever ago uh, again Started seven in, years uh, ago in october of 2013 so coming up on eight years ago nuts we had a show called mole, the mole and jersey show uh and it was a window cleaning like variety hour of like segments it was actually a lot of fun to do and some people know if uh monarch is um watching monarch knows metler maintenance if you you probably remember his name he changed companies but he watches still he's a diehard and i think oh, some wow. of you may know M mullen jersey in general but uh but what have you been doing now like if people don't know you were a window cleaner you had a I window cleaning business you sold it to a family member and then you are doing what? Like, tell us your story. Yep. So I got out of the uh, horrible hellscape that is the cleaning service business. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I really miss it a lot, a lot of the time. Uh, but I sold that business and started working uh, for the man, actually. I started, I wasn't my own boss anymore for a while. Started working in 2015 uh, for an auto repair shop. Really good friend of mine had started an auto repair shop and, uh, he didn't really know anything about business, but he was a good technician. So he hired me in to kind of help grow the business, which did happen. And uh, eventually he said, hey, I want to move back to where my family is and kind of, you know, um, not be doing this anymore. So I brought on a business partner who was helping me run the auto repair shop. And so you, you can see my shirt is uh, Integrity Auto Repair. My hat uh, is white. There you go. Integrity mm. Auto Repair. Crispy. And uh, so, yeah, so. Uh, a few years ago, ended up buying out the founder of Integrity Auto Repairs. So we've got two locations, um, also sell some cars and do some financing and that kind of thing. So all uh, in the automotive related business now. So, and people but are like I do, I do miss the uh, cleaning service business, the simplicity of, you know, finding something dirty, leaving it clean. It's such a fulfilling thing. 
Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's really, really, really something that I miss a lot of the time. Yeah. Just like being able to like put a AirPod in and just like vibe out while you're cleaning. And yeah. Yep. Well, some people are probably like, well, what the heck is this like mechanic grease monkey, if you will? Why is he on the show? Well, I thought this would be absolutely amazing because we talked about this a couple of times, but you are a, were a window cleaner into another industry. So now we can take like two industries and see how the other world is. Cause so many people, they like wear blinders and they think that window cleaning is the biggest thing ever because that's all they can see. And I thought that this would be kind of a refreshing, like look into everything. Yep. For sure. Before we start to talk about all your business questions, uh, just to take one quick uh, trip down memory lane, if you don't mind. And I know you, you love yeah. it when somebody hijacks your show. Like this. I love it. I love it. Uh, when we were off air, I just wanted you to tell me the story fully. Uh, you started telling it before we started recording about um, the name of the Mullen Jersey show. Well, yes. So the only way that we had uh, done that show in order to get you on board was to change the name what so that name your name was be? first. Well, so- I had like a bunch of versions of it. And then I thought, well, if I do Mole and Jersey show, then I could be like, your name's first. You're, and then that's what you're like, all right, but I don't want to do anything with it, but all right. So I was the one that did all the editing and stuff. And then <laughs> most of the time you just showed up to get recorded. That was, that was pretty much it. I actually didn't even realize that the show was off the air. <laughs> 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 I thought right. this was the Mullen Jersey show. I just thought you didn't want to do it anymore for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to, I was you- taking, I was just taking a seven year hiatus from you. That's all. <laughs> okay well you know that's necessary sometimes i guess everybody needs a little break every so often could have been closer to 10 though i mean really i could i could have squeaked out another three years of a break but well that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to overload you and your audience now all right so what do you that's want to talk okay. about that's okay that's okay well yeah so as you kind of mentioned like you were in the business and everything and you miss like just the humdrum of it right yep. but like you also know in industries like what looking back at window cleaning like what did we blow out of proportion like what in window cleaning were you like why was anybody worried about that and we're probably still worried about it Mm, yeah i i think that um it's very easy you know i was at the trade show the huge convention uh in atlanta and just you know looking around i mean i don't know any of the latest tools and i you know i feel like some of these tools can make people better and, but I think there's a lot of obsession of which specific one of the tools is the one. Yeah. It's like, you, you need tools to build your efficiency. And obviously people like Josh need you to buy tools. And if you do, make sure you reach out to him and give him that uh, virtual <laughs> high five. But I think that sometimes there's an obsession with spending hours and hours researching every tool when there are really legitimate people like Josh who can say, hey, here's what you need, grab what you need use your time if you're going to be on the computer doing a whole bunch of research, like learn about some of the other things like marketing, you know, that would be a better use of time. So I think like focusing so much on the act of window cleaning, the nitty gritty of it, what ladder is it stack ladders? Is it retractable ladders? Well, what pole, you know, it's like, yeah, let somebody point you in the right direction based on what their perspective is of what, you know, your situation is and then get after. I think that's one that in every industry, the people who are out there nose to nose to glass or, you know, hand to water fed pole, um, you know, hand to freaking pump up spray or whatever it is, you can start to, you can start to get obsessed with the the tools that you use to do that act. Um, yeah. And I think that can sometimes be a distraction from the more important thing. Yeah. There's, there's so much stuff out there and people are almost scared. Like, well, Unger and Ettore, which squeegee should I buy? And it's like both. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, at this point, exactly. especially going from like window cleaning to in the automotive repair business, like you got to buy a new laser or something. And it's like, you know, $3,500 in ours. It's like, man, it's a $30 squeegee. What are you worried about? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's exactly right. And just, it was interesting, like, you know, looking at all the tools there and, you know, seeing like window cleaners are like, oh my God, like, you know, was, what am I going to do this <laughs> one or that one? And it's like, I just buy both of them. And like, then the one you don't use, like sell it on eBay or throw it away. Like it's $25. Yeah. Don't you, you know. uh, don't you wish you didn't have like uh, uh, snap on and everything else? You could just buy like cheap stuff like Harbor Freight tools, like yes, six dollar mm-hmm. screwdrivers, of course. Yeah, then yeah. Just uh, break. the tools in our world are very expensive for sure. <laughs> so, I well, think that's like, one thing you know, it's, it's easy, it's easy to forget. Like, there's a quote I can't remember who said it, but it said, uh, the easiest thing to do in business is to make your first dollar the hardest thing to do is to understand why you made the first dollar. Yeah. And you start to think that it's because somebody's paying you to clean the window. 
But ultimately, the window is uh, sort of a vessel to get something else. It's a vessel to get them time or a vessel to give them some sort of convenience or whatever it is. Um, and so when you focus on the act of cleaning the window, which is important, obviously, you know, you just can get a little bit distracted there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so many people think the wrong thing in business. They think window cleaning is so important and it's the windows. Why do people hire you? Cause I clean such a great window. My windows are so clean. Like it's like, no, no one cares because that's uniform. That's like bringing your car into a mechanic. It's going to get fixed. Like it's assumed yeah. that no matter yeah. where you go, it'll get fixed. Yeah. Fix is the, the baseline. Thing. Fix is yeah. the baseline. Like that's, that's the, the, the bare necessity. Everything else is what makes them come back. Yeah. And, and now you've been out of window cleaning for like probably oh, wow. five years, six, six years six now. Years. Yeah. So what has changed in the industry? Like innovative wise, because it's really hard to innovate in a world of like squeegees. Right. I mean, that was developed back in like the teens and- you would think that, but man, they have like all kinds of like peripheral attachments there. Like I'm waiting for a Bluetooth squeegee to come out at this point. Ooh. Like it's crazy. Like, I mean, the swivels and the wags and the flips and the flops. It's like, there's so much. It's, it's a lot of yeah. goodies and different buckets and the poles. Like, you know, I remember buying poles at Home Depot that were like, I mean, they were like, you know, rubber band, like yeah. the stiffness of them was terrible. And now you guys are using these like amazing carbon fiber poles for traditional like storefront window cleaning, not for water fed pole, yeah. but like just for regular, like traditional polling work. It's like, wow. Yeah. People are always like, uh, it's the, it's the dawn or like the age of the luxury. Right. So there's buckets on a belt now that are $300. There's carbon fiber trad poles that are $300. Like stuff like that people almost like have that like mentality now of like it's my stuff this is my office i'm gonna have the best coolest things i can which to be honest with you i really respect that especially if you're like kind of a small team either like an owner operator or like a a, you know because buying nice tools you're gonna take really good care of them and you're gonna be super productive and you're gonna set yourself up to where you're super efficient and yeah. like, I think that's another thing in, uh, in all business is, you know, it can get addictive to keep getting more and more bigger, bigger. And, uh, I don't know, like more trucks is not always more profit. It's definitely more headache. It's a hundred percent more headache, not necessarily hundred percent more profit. And so yeah. I feel like some of those really good owner operators should buy the stuff that they like and the stuff that's going to keep them engaged in doing it, you know, and so they can kind of keep on keeping on, save your knees, save your wrists, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's that same concept that we've talked about on the show before, but like if somebody wants to make another $25,000 in business, they don't just go out and sell another $25,000 in business. Like they have to, if you got guys doing it, you're making a 10%, you know, profit on that. You really have to make $250,000 worth of sales to get another 25,000 out of it. So it's, it's that same kind of concept that more headaches does, doesn't always mean better. Yep. What else you got? Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to know something about equipment, like in your world, because equipment is like on another like level, how important is it to get that new equipment? We just talked about kind of that there is so much new equipment, but is it important to always be on the cutting edge and like the newest best stuff? Is it smart to do that or is it not so smart? I think a lot of it comes down to core values, like what each owner, what each operator kind of values. There, there are folks who are set up to be kind of like very traditional. And so they're running the same equipment on each truck that they have been for the last 10 years because they found what works. And so they're not really like branching out a ton. We have what works for us. We're kind of sticking with it. Uh, And then there are some people who would get so bored with that. They like to tinker and they like to, you know, add new stuff. And that's part of the fun of it for them. And so I think it comes down to a lot of, you know, if you're self-employed, if you're a business owner, then you have freedom and flexibility. And like, that's the American dream is to be able to make your own choice of how you want to do it. And so, you know, in our world, uh, there are technicians, technician A may have every brand new tool off the snap on truck. He may have a hundred grand worth of tools, literally a hundred grand worth of tools. And all those things in theory are to save you money and to, you know, be more productive and all that kind of stuff. And there's another guy who has sort of the same stuff that he's had for the last 10 years and, and it works and he, he's not going to be on the snap on truck every minute buying a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. They're the ones who are using those things every day. 
Um, I'll tell you what I do see, though, and like I said, at trade shows and things like that, the guys who are in the pressure washing and like the surface cleaning side of this world, they are not afraid to spend money. No. Because those rigs are already expensive. And so they, when they come into window cleaning, and window cleaners need to be aware of this. If you're a window cleaner and you've got pressure washers who are coming into your space, they are going to tool up to do it right. Yeah. And they're going to tool up to be efficient and productive. And so, you know, if you're looking to be competitive with, you know, guys like that, then you better be willing to spend the money to get legit because yeah. when those guys roll in, they are coming in heavy. Yeah. Yeah. That I, that's funny you say that because when I was running my business, uh, we had uh, uh, one day we went out and bought an $1,800 pressure washer as a backup. I didn't use that for probably six, nine months, you know, when I got it, but it was like, I have to have it because if something goes down, then it's, and it's a backup that just sat there and it was $1,600 where now it's like, <laughs> what should I get the Ederator Unger uh, squeegee? And it's like the 20 bucks by both, you know, nah, I can't do both. You know, it's, it's definitely interesting to look at it both from both sides. For sure. I want to know in, in, in a different industry though, right? We talked window cleaning, you know, window cleaning, and now you're into something else, but what do you do to make a customer happy? Like, how do you make a customer happy? Is that specific to the industry or is that just specific to customer service like across the board? I think it really depends. One thing that I really miss about window cleaning is by and large, window cleaning is an optional service. It's a luxury service, especially luxury. when you're talking about, you know, when you're talking about residential window cleaning. Um, so people by and large are happy to see you. Um, and so with us, you know, nobody's really looking to come see us. You know, your car breaks down, you're already super aggravated by the time you get to us. Yeah. And so we're not really optional at that point. I mean, you, there's a lot of choices you can go to, but um, so people tend to be really stressed out, really frustrated, really annoyed when they come to the auto repair shop. And so a lot of that, the customer service there, what people are looking for, and I think this translates across the board is uh, clear communication don't over promise and then under deliver do the opposite. So under promise and then over deliver. So for example, what that looks like on in our world is, Hey, Miss Johnson, we're going to have the part here uh, tomorrow afternoon. And there's a chance we may get it back to you tomorrow, but more likely plan for the day after tomorrow. Yeah. And if we can, we'll call you instead of saying, Hey, we're going to have the party here tomorrow and we'll do our best to get it back in your hands tomorrow. All she hears is that she's going to have the car back tomorrow. Right. And so, so doing what you say you're going to do, is super duper important. You know, in the window cleaning world, that means showing up on time when you say you're going to do an estimate, when you schedule a job, like if you've got to schedule a four hour window to show up to the job, then do that rather than say, Hey, I'm going to be there at eight. And then something comes up and you can't get there till 10. You're just going to piss people off that way for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. So and set, I would... set, set good expectations, I think, and then follow through on them. I mean, by and large in America, the level of like human interaction is going to absolute crap. Like yeah. people have no human skills whatsoever anymore. And everyone's so mean and nasty to each other. And so if you do what you say you're going to do and are kind to people, then I really think you're going to have just a tremendous edge. If you answer your dang phone and then show up and you say you're going to show up, like I think you'll have as much work as you want to have. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, it's awesome that you actually said that because uh, a couple episodes ago, we talked about um, um, uh, getting complaints, right? People give you bad oh, reviews. Yeah, and I, I, yeah, I, I, saw I, I watch one. all the episodes, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Watch all the episodes. Well, just to remind you, I, I'll pretend you didn't, you didn't see it. For those of you who didn't listen, not myself, yeah. tell, tell right, the right. audience, tell the audience what it was about. Right. Yeah. So we had talked about people only complain when their expectations aren't met. That's literally the reason people are unhappy. It's not because the window wasn't clean enough. It's because they expected it to be cleaner. It's not that your price was too high. They expected it to be lower. Like it's the expectation side. So if you set expectations and say, hey, I'm showing up to your house. These windows have not been cleaned in, you know, five years. It's going to take some time and the frames are still not going to look great or pressure washing a house. You know, it's not a magic wand. We're going to make it look a lot better, but it's not going to look like a brand new house. Like explaining something to somebody where then they have new expectations, they can meet those expectations and not complain, even if it's not what they quite what they wanted. Yep. Yeah, you're the expert. You dictate how this is going to go. And I think a lot of times we just want to get the job. And so we don't do the hard work of kind of like setting ourselves up to succeed on the front end. And that's yeah. across all businesses. It's just easier just to kind of like 
let them assume what they're going to assume, hope to God it works out, and then, you know, take the check and roll. Yeah. Like that's well, just a your, lot easier. In your brain and customer service, you, you never want to or you never can say bad things. So sometimes when you're like, hey, just so you know, this is going to look good, but it's not going to look brand new. Like even on, in your brain is saying it, it sounds negative. When I said it to you, it didn't sound rude or negative. It didn't sound anything. You're like, oh yeah. Like you would say, oh yeah, no, I know the concrete's like 20 years old. I know it's not going to come out perfect, but saying it, it creates an expectation. It's, it's different than just having them think it. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So let me talk about another thing on what you do that would kind of translate is, so say a big job, we already know we're a luxury, you're a necessity, but if you got a big job, the guy ran it out of oil, blew a motor up and the motor then sees up his transmitter. He needs everything, big thing. How do you tell somebody a big job, like a big ticket item? How do you sell it? Is it different? Is it the same? Is it just like, here's the facts? Tell us how to do that because there's a lot of window cleaners out there who are trying to do these big bids. They're a little bit overwhelmed with a bid and putting it out there. How, how do you do that? Yeah, I remember the first time as a window cleaner, I remember the first time I ever did a bid and it was over $1,000. And I'd been, I'd been doing window cleaning for like, I don't know, a couple of months. And uh, it was a, a monstrous house with a guest house in a, a separate garage, so it's three buildings in and out window cleaning on both buildings. It was going to take me two days by my calculations. So I go, I count this whole thing up. I count up 1200 bucks and I'm like, well, that can't be right. It can't be this <laughs> high. That's insane. So I literally go count the whole thing again, put it all together. And now it's 1200 bucks again. I'm like, well, that does, doesn't make any sense. So I keep kind of like calculating down. I talk myself down from 1200 bucks down to 1050. I can't get myself any lower than that. I talk down to 1050, knock, knock, knock guy comes out i remember this house the guy everything so vividly knock 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 hey and i was so like nervous and apologetic about it hey this new customer, little, uh, little, yeah, little exactly little Michael. i'm like i was like 21 you know and uh, <laughs> it's like you know hey mr customer um i have the uh you know quote here and uh so in and out window cleaning is going to be uh 1050 dollars i'm, and I'm sorry it's like, so high <laughs> yeah and and he just like barely glances at it and says okay when do you want to do it and I just, I went, I was like, okay, so we scheduled it. I went back in my truck and I felt so stupid for talking myself out of $150 for no reason Yeah. because he would have said the same thing for 1200 bucks. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times how we feel can be our biggest downfall. And I talk a lot about that with the guys who work in integrity. Like if a, if a motor's blown up, you didn't go out there and blow that motor up. It's yeah. not your fault. And so you can be empathetic and sympathetic to the customer. But the important thing is that they're trusting you to tell them the facts. It's almost like going to a doctor. So you have good bedside manner. You tell what the facts are. And if it's going to be, if it needs a lot of work, then it just needs a lot of work. And so the line that I'll use to people sometimes is, hey, I've got bad news for you. Uh, I don't write the news. I just report it. So because that kind of says like, I didn't build your house, sir. I don't, don't dictate how long this is going to take to pressure wash it or that right, you went right. four years without doing it. I don't dictate this, you know, but here's where we are. This is what it's going to take to fix it. And then I'm not a big assumptive close. So we can get you scheduled on Thursday if you want to. I'm not a big into that, but one of the facts that I always end on. So here's what it needs. Here's how much it's going to cost. And then here's the timetable. If you decide to do it, yeah. here's the information. You know, if you need to take some time to think about it, that's great or if I can answer any questions for you and really just be very factual about it. Because at the end of the day, for us, this is business. I mean, we see, you know, 150 cars a week between the two shops, you know, and, but for them, it's their only car that they have at yeah. the shop. And so being empathetic to the fact that this is a big deal for them. And just like as a service provider, you're at X amount of houses a day. You do this all day, every day. You can get yeah. kind of callous to it where for them, if a window breaks, it's like, well, a window broke, I'm sorry. You know, but for them, it's like, Jesus, you know, they broke a window of my house. Yeah. So, so not getting too emotionally invested into it so that you escalate them. But, you know, you're the service provider. You take control of this situation. Tell them what happened. Tell them what needs to happen. And then, you know, go from there. Yeah. It's the, uh, well, I wouldn't pay that much. I wouldn't pay $1,200 for that. It's like, you're not your customer. You're not your customer I'm not, base. I'm not asking. I'm not asking myself no. to pay twelve fifty for window cleaning. I wouldn't. Obviously, right. <laughs> I don't pay to have my windows cleaned right now. I'm not my target market. I never have been. Yeah, people get confused sometimes, and then they get in this panic mode. 
when if you break it in, I always say like you could eat an entire cow if you did it one bite at a time. It may take you, you know, uh, uh, two years, but you could do that. And that's that same idea with 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 jobs. It's if you break it down, you can't be wrong. No, I was an idiot for dropping myself down 150 bucks and just beating myself up out of that 150 bucks. And that to 21 year old Michael Mole, 150 dollars was a lot of money. You yeah, know, I wish that's I had 50 dollars that you should have had. I should have had it, but I talked myself out of it because I was just scared. Yeah, you know. But but man, that guy, I just remember how he did not bat an eye, and I was just like, oh, I am never doing this to myself again. That's how the other half lives. That's why they have six cars in the driveway. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned that you had extra locations. We're going to talk about that in one second, but talk about hiring. What is the difference between hiring somebody who is uh, unskilled, like a window cleaner, and skilled, like a um, mechanic? Well, so I'll talk about the mechanics out of it first, um, because I don't think the window cleaner is unskilled necessarily. I think that's actually one of the toughest skills you can hire for specifically is window cleaning, but I'll come back to that. Um, the, The... skilled trade shortage in America is devastating. So if you're a parent who's listening to this and you have a kid who's mechanically inclined and they want to go be a welder or an electrician or a plumber or an auto repair technician or an aviation mechanic, you can make 50, 75, 100 grand a year without going into college debt. I mean, if you're good with your hands, you can do so well with no college debt. And so, you know, I think that people have bought the lie. You go to a four-year institution and then you get out and there's a job just waiting for you. And that's just not true. And a lot of people would be better off to go become a junior, an assistant welder and then a junior welder and then a master welder and make 40 bucks an hour than to go get $30,000 of student loan debt and then go be a barista. I mean, like that's just insane. And so the the skilled, go ahead. I was just going to say the Joe or the, not Joe Rogan, uh, Mike Mike Rowe. Yeah, yeah, the borrowing jobs. money you don't have to get jobs yeah. that don't exist. Yeah. Yes, yes. And so the skilled trade shortage is just devastating for us. Um, however, it's a huge opportunity because no shop has enough technicians. So you take really good care of the technicians you have, and you know that every other shop who's your competitor is also suffering. And so that yeah. means you don't drop your prices, you keep your prices high, so then you can afford to hire really good people. Um, so if you do it right and you're a good human being who people want to work with, and note I didn't say work for, but work with, if you are a decent human being and a good leader, then I think it's an opportunity. Yeah. Um, And and again, that goes back to a lot of being the right person, learning those leadership skills, that kind of thing. Um, Window cleaners are tough to hire. I think pressure washing is a little bit more of an unskilled thing than window cleaning. Oh, I know I'm going to piss off all the pressure washers here. (laughs) I don't care. Right. right. I'll I'll tell you why. Interior window cleaners is the absolute cream of the crop of human beings because you have to be an athlete. I mean, these guys are climbing into some crazy places to get some cert, you know, some some things. So you've yeah. got to have this level of athleticism. You're in people's homes, in their conference rooms, in their bedrooms. So you have to have this insane relatability and uh, just innate trustworthiness. And that's already so just those two things. And then you have to have an att- attention to detail. So you're not this bumbling buffoon who's knocking everything down everywhere you go. I mean, like to, to dot all those things there, it's really, really tough. It's really tough. If all you do is exterior window cleaning, man, I can hire anybody on the street and have them an exterior window cleaner with a water fed pole in an afternoon. But if you're a, a true window cleaner who's doing interior window cleaning, you have my complete respect because you are doing, (laughs) you are making your money really the hard way and you're doing an exceptionally difficult thing screw you pressure washers no i'm just kidding i'm just kidding kidding. they're the ones out there spraying bleach and making real money you know all the window cleaners are scratching and clawing right right so you everybody off today josh that that's what i expected that's what everybody expected (laughs) but so you'd you'd rather uh you don't envy anybody who's got to hire uh in the window cleaning world anymore it's a tough thing man it's a tough thing is really hard. I, I mean, since you've been out, like the whole uh, Amazon pays eighteen dollars an hour to pull something off a shelf. It's really hard when you're like, "Hey, you want to work outside?" And they're like, "Or I could work in seventy-two degree weather and get paid lunches, you know, or whatever." Like, it's yeah. really, really tough. Yeah, I th- I think that it's going to keep on getting tougher and tougher, and so you either see it as an obstacle or as an opportunity. Like I said. Yeah. Yeah. Well, finally, one last thing I want to ask: you got two locations. A lot of window cleaners want to do. Another location. I'm going to start another. Like I hear it more than it actually comes to fruition. Uh, I've run two locations. Tell me about it in your world. 
how two locations can suck, how it could be awesome. How is it done? Right. Tell me about it. Yeah. So the having two locations is the reason that I own integrity because the founder of integrity, he didn't have the confidence to be able to oversee two locations, knowing that he could only be in one place at a time. And so we grew to that before he realized that what his limitation was. And so then he didn't know how to undo it. So he kind of extricated himself out of the whole process and just sold it to me instead. Um, And so it's a real thing that there is a lot of challenges to it. Um, I think the number one most important thing that I addressed by bringing in Craig, who's uh, my business partner, he runs one of the locations. And I primarily, I don't run the other location, but I primarily uh, have my office at the other location. So there's some oversight by ownership at both locations. Yeah. Um, so I think there's value in that. So whether it's a partner to help run another location or whether it's your number one right-hand man or woman guy or girl to run that other location, you have to figure out how do you replicate yourself in some way. You can't be in two places at once, but your core values, you've got to have so over-communicated those and so been on the same page with one person who can um, really instinctively know how you would operate and so literally, I mean, when, when we were, before we even bought the business, when Craig and I were running the two locations, we literally were texting constantly throughout the day, talking about different situations and how different things arose and how do we handle this situation or that situation. Um, so I think like you, you can't clone yourself, but you want to come as close as you can yeah. through communication of core values and how do you handle these different situations and tactically, how do we manage this, that, and the third. I think that's real important. Um, you know, to, to have the, the human framework in place. And then yeah. there's got to be, you, you've got to have a certain amount of um, your structures in place or your processes in place in order to make it happen or to make oversight happen. So right. some key numbers that you're looking at on a regular basis so that you'll know if things aren't right or are right. Not from walking around from a feel standpoint, but from a black and white numbers on a page standpoint. And so every business is going to have a different one is that phone calls coming in, quotes that are given, amount of quotes that are closed, dollars sold, dollars completed, you know, whatever that is. So I think having a key person and having some processes that you can evaluate is really, really important. And then that gives you kind of the framework that you can manage with. But I think if you open a second location or honestly, even add a second truck before you're in that situation, you're really compromising your business brand by extending it out too far like you know if you watering it down well that's and the thing is if you have your platform and you build the deck out over the edge of it and then you keep on going out and out and out but you haven't built the structure out to support what you're building out over you know you you can kind of weaken everything and potentially bring the whole thing down and so you've got to make sure the structures can hold up what you're putting out yeah yeah i like that and finally, finally, tell me like five names of window cleaners that you remember. They could be trolls. They could be memorable people. Tell me five of the OGs that you can remember names of window cleaners since you've not been in the mm. business in so long. All right. Um, so number one is uh, Seth Pimper Foss. Mm, that's um, right. He's, he's number one. Um, Triple C, Chris Cartwright. I remember oh, him. Is he, is he still in the business? What's he doing? He is. He seen. is. Yeah. Okay. He was out and then got in and started a company again. Good for him. I might do that someday. Yeah. Uh, so tri- triple C, I remember. Um, Tony Evans. I remember I Tony I knew that Evans. was coming up. Yeah. Um, let's see. We didn't prep this ahead of time. Swear to God. No, um, I don't. I purposely didn't prep it so that you could uh, yeah. remember. Yeah. Uh, let's see. There's uh, Luke, the window cleaner. Um, oh. I remember him. I think yep, you guys actually, were real close, see, right? I see his uh, sticker behind you there. Yes. Um, no, I met him one time. I met him one time. Yeah. Oh. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think, is there one more? Larry Kreisel? I think I remember oh, him. There you go. Was that one. was out of the left field. I, I knew you, yeah. that one, but there you go. Yeah. Five window cleaners who like nowadays... Shout out to all Luke. the fans of, of the Mullen Jersey show, man. Like yes. you said, uh, you said uh, Eric Mettler is still around or yeah, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. Is it Eric? Yes. Did I get that yeah, right? Yeah, you did. Man. And shout Your out to man's. me for remembering Monarch that. Man. Shout out to him. Monarch. Good job on the <laughs> rebrand. Shout out to me for remembering that. 
by the way, uh, if you don't know who Michael Mole is, just hearing him say shout out to me for remembering that. <laughs> that's Michael Mole. You all know, have seen it all. And I wish I could tell people to go watch Mole and Jersey Show, but you uh, nuked the entire channel and the videos are no longer available. But I did not do that. Right. I, I do appreciate that. you coming and hanging out with us, you know, us, us little uh, measly window cleaners here. We're just, we're, we're so happy that we had you to come and chat with us. You know, when uh, when you become president and you like kind of ride through the old hood just to kind of see what it was like and like, you know, what the <laughs> what the homies are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, what this I, is like, Josh. I do that when I go back to like where I moved from a few years ago. I'll like just drive through certain neighborhoods just to be like, I remember those houses. What's changing now? Oh, they painted the front door. I wouldn't have done that, but whatever. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you a funny story before you get rid of me. So yeah. uh, so there's this uh, this lady who came in to have her car worked on the other day. And uh, she was in, I mean, really desperate, like seemed very in a real big hurry for us to get her car taken care of. So she's got a leak from the hose. We find the leak. We're like, hey, I can get it fixed for you, but I can't get the hose till, you know, late this evening. So it'll probably be tomorrow before we get it done. She's like, well, you know, this is going to be a big problem because I live in this car. So I was like, oh my gosh. All right. Well, so the hose comes, we get the car fixed. She's not there. She had like gone for a walk or something. So I'm calling her and calling her and calling her like, please come pick up your car so I can go home. She won't answer, won't call back. So finally I just parked the car outside, lock it. Cause I'm not going to leave it unlocked. Yeah. Lock it, lock the doors, go home. Next morning I come back she's sound asleep in this car in the parking lot. She had another key to it. So she comes in, pays for the whole thing. And uh, I was like, you know, we're chatting. She's like, thank you so much for getting this done. You know, now I got to get to work. I was like, oh, what do you do for a living? She's like, oh, I drive Uber. I was just like, what? So she she really needed us to take care of her car. And I just, I didn't realize how important our job was because this lady, when her car was broken, she lost the house the car and the job all at once. Yeah. So just, it's crazy situation out there, man. Like, you know, we're saving lives. That's it's, you know, (laughs) it's, it's something pretty special. You, yeah. I think if everybody's watching, if anybody wants to applaud uh, to themselves right now for Mike, you you sure can. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you all. Definitely. Well, either way, I do appreciate you uh, hanging out. I appreciate the uh, uh, trip down memory lane. Thanks for hanging out. I know uh, we still talk regularly, so we for will, us, we will mean, do this. We will do this every seven years, Josh. Henceforth every, and forevermore, we'll do this every seven years. When uh, wait, what is it? When the cicadas come or the locusts? Yeah. Or whatever it is, that <laughs> yeah. Every every eighteen years, we'll do this yeah. every seven. Okay. That All just right. means I have to do this for another uh, seven or eighteen years. I don't know about that. Well, then. Like I said, I've watched all 220 of your episodes and I, I order window cleaning supplies that I just throw away. Like I give nice. them to homeless people to support you, to give you a virtual high five. So Listen. if you guys are real window cleaners and you're not supporting my friend in Jersey, Josh, what are you even doing? Like, this is insanity. I, I like that. I think. How dare you? <laughs> I like that. I think that's uh that's my new pledge. I'm going to make that on uh, my, my new, uh, my new motto there. How dare you? But yeah, either how way, dare you? what are you even doing? <laughs> what are you even doing with your lives? But really, if you guys are out there and you need window cleaning supplies, that's what I do. Like Michael Mole said, give me a call. 862-312-2026 is my cell phone. Please let me be your rep. I'd love to do nothing more than to put your orders in. And if you really, really, really like me, get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. It's mailed to your door every single month, and it is an awesome window cleaning magazine. So please do that. But either way, cost to be a, a, a subscriber to Window Cleaner or American Window Cleaner. How much does that cost? That is a sixty nine dollars a year. Or you can join the uh, sticker <laughs> nice. club. The <laughs> the uh, sixty eight dollars and ninety nine cents. Uh, or you can join the sticker club for only four dollars and ninety nine cents a month. So. Okay. Uh, what I would like to do, Josh, is you can do this however you want to. But I would like to give one of your listeners a free sixty nine dollars to be a subscriber. So you pick who that is. And I will send you $69 to pay for that, okay? There you go. Michael Mull just bought somebody a subscription. If you want to win, all you have to do is comment on YouTube and say, yo, I want to win and tell me something about no, Michael Mull. No, Yes, tell them how awesome Tell tell how awesome <laughs> I am and the $69 is yours. I don't want the magazine because I don't care, but I'll pay for somebody else to have it. Thank you, there Josh. You Thank you for having me. Love you so much. And I will talk to you later. Definitely. Thanks, guys. And until next week, go out there and be epic.